Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll be taking a look at the models in Fury of the Deep and suggesting some Warcry cards and abilities that we can use for them. We got a look at this new Age of Sigmar battle box called Fury of the Deep earlier this week. And I've done a video on it where we looked at all the contents and exactly what's included. But I thought it'd be fun to take a look at some of the Warcry cards and abilities, match those up to the different models that are included, and just see if it'll be any good for Warcry. And a shout out and thanks to Joshua for giving me the idea for this video. Okay, so this box has got two new hero miniatures in there. There's going to be 43 models altogether, and it's going to be an army of the Ideneth Deepkin and an army of the Fire Slayers. So you get quite a lot of miniatures there, more than we would necessarily need for Warcry. There's also some other things in the in the box, like the book, the War Scrolls and the tokens, and we're not going to need those either. But let's have a look at those miniatures and just see if there's any value there for us in Warcry and exactly how many points we'll get from it and what fighters we can use from the Grand Alliance Sentinels of Order supplement book. Let's start with the Ideneth Deepkin and we're going to go through all the different fighter types that we can use the models from and their abilities. I'll also do a price breakdown at the end of the video, but if you were to buy these individually at the full RRP without any discount, this is going to come to a total of £105 for the Ideneth Deepkin army that's included. So we're definitely going to save on this, but that's going to give us a figure that we can start with. Here are all the fighter cards that are available to the whole faction, the Ideneth Deepkin, taken from the Grand Alliance Sentinels of Order supplement book. So with only 12 fighter types, there certainly isn't a lot to work with here. And they really could use with more because they've got some great models. Some of the big models they've got are fantastic. And I think I'd love to see some of those bigger models being represented in Warcry. They've got a page of abilities just as normal. So they've got the fighter abilities on the left and the leader abilities on the right. And there's only one ability that all the members of the warband can use. So let's have a look at that first so we don't have to repeat it for each fighter. So this one is a double called Low Tide. And here a fighter can use this ability only if it is the first battle round. This fighter can make a bonus move action a number of inches equal to the value of this ability. This could well be my least favourite ability for pretty much all of Warcry. I think, you know, you do need to get a high value here for your ability to make it worth it. And you can only use it in the first round. So you really want to be getting a few doubles to make the most of this ability for your different fighters. Um, so it's not all that impressive for the Ideneth Deepkin. And I think they can be a lot better than this. But that said, if you do get it right and you get a good few doubles, you can really start pushing those fighters close to the enemy. And if you use some of the bigger models with a bit more power to them, then they can certainly get in there and do some damage. Now let's look at the first fighter type that we can use from the Namati Reavers. And it is the Namati Reaver at 75 points. We've got the Agile Rumark, so we are going to get an ability there. Got a nice movement of six, toughness three, and they're going to take eight wounds. They've got two weapon types. The first is a range, minimum three inches, maximum 15. They can make two attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. But if they get up close, they've got this dagger or blade and they can do an attack from a range of one, making three attacks, strength three, dealing one to three on a crit. So these are certainly not going to do a lot of damage, but that range is nice having it up to 15. You certainly want to keep these out of the way and that movement's really going to help you do that. Six inches of movement is going to keep them away from the enemy. Certainly if you're going up against some of the slower ones, like the Fire Slayers, they're not going to get close to you with pretty much all round a movement of three. You can really keep a good distance and just snip away at them with that um, range weapon. We've already seen an ability they can use, that first double called Low Tide, but they get their own double for this Agile Rumark, which is called Stormfire. And until the end of this fight is activation, add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that target an enemy fighter more than three inches away. So this is pretty good. For a double, I like this. You can now make three attacks instead of two with your range weapon, and that's really going to add to the output potentially is going to give you more chance of getting those hits and causing the damage. So I think this makes up for that low tide for sure and I would always be wanting to use Stormfire with the Namati Reaver. You've got another option from this box set which is a Namati Reaver Icon Bearer and this is a bit more points now at 135. You've still got that movement 6, 
and the toughness three, but now you can take twice as many wounds. There's 16 points of damage here. It's got another rune mark for the leadership rune mark and that agile rune mark for the ability we've just seen. The weapons are the same, but there's some changes. With the range weapon, the range is the same, but now they can make three attacks straight away, and the damage output is going to be one to four. So get a crit, you're going to do four damage here. Strength three as well. And then up close with that dagger, that strength has improved. So now it's range one, three attacks, strength three, still dealing one to three on a crit though. So you're paying an extra 60 points just to get double the amount of wounds and you can do a bit more damage with a little bit more strength as well. So really it's the ability that you're going to be paying for here. And you can use this miniature either as your leader or you could choose to use it as a hero within it. So let's take a look at the ability then. So this is a triple called High Tide. And now any fighter with the rune mark of the Ideneth Deepkin and the leader rune mark can use this one. So we'll see this coming up quite a lot through the video. So this is called High Tide and it's a triple. A fighter can use this ability only if it is the third battle round. Add one to the attacks and strength characteristics of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So this plays into the narrative as well. In round one, you want to use that low tide to push forward and get as close as you can to the enemy. But now in the high tide, you can use that strength like the sea coming in. You've got that extra attacks and extra strength, adding one to both. And that's really going to have a big impact. So you want to get this icon bearer as close as you can to as many fighters as possible to make this worthwhile. Now we're on to the next set of miniatures that will be included in this box set, and these are the Namati Thralls. So you're going to get a box of 10 of these, and the Namati Thrall is going to come in at 80 points. We've got the Minion Room Mark, and so we're going to get an ability we haven't seen yet. We've got Movement 5, Toughness 3, and they can take 8 wounds. Their weapon, this blade, is going to be a range of 1. They can make 4 attacks, strength 3, and they're going to deal 2 to 4 on a crit. So that's not bad. That damage output's pretty good, and they're making 4 attacks as well. They're not strong, they're not tough, and their movement 5 is okay. Again, going up against the Fire Slayers, they can keep a distance until they want to get close and attack. So it's not too bad for 80 points. They're going to get that double low tide ability, but they also get this one, the double sweeping blow. And here, roll 1 dice for each visible enemy fighter within two inches of this fighter. On a five, allocate one damage point to the fighter being rolled for. On a six, allocate a number of damage points to the fighter being rolled for equal to the value of this ability. So for a double, this seems pretty good. It's each visible enemy within two inches of them, but you don't want to get yourself surrounded. Their toughness is pretty low and they haven't got many wounds. So you've got to weigh that up really. And you, then you've got to roll at least a five or a six to cause any damage. But that six is really what you're hoping for. And with a high value of the ability, you could potentially do some damage. But I don't know if I'd want to put these in amongst too many enemy fighters and risk them because they're going to get taken out really easily. We've got an option with this set to also make an Amati Thrall Icon Barrier. And again, this one's going to come with that leader rune mark. And so you can use them as your leader or as a hero if you've already got a leader aside. And these are again, more points, 140. Still got the same movement, 5, toughness 3 and 16 wounds. They can take twice as many runes as the regular Thrall. They've got the leader rune mark, the minion rune mark. They can make an attack from a range 1, 4 attacks, strength 4, and they're going to deal two to five on a crit. So that strength four is really good, I think. And making four attacks is nice as well. So that's not bad. Four, four, and then dealing two to five, five on a crit, I think is pretty good. But let's have a look at the abilities just to recap. As a leader, they're going to get this triple high tide. They already get the low tide. And then they're also going to get the sweeping blow that we saw with the Namati Thrall earlier. So a good set of abilities and a little bit of potential here, I think, for this one. Now we're on to my favourite model from this box set, and that's the Alapex. Now this doesn't have a Warcry card, and there's nothing all that similar to it that stands out. So we've got 
12 fighter cards altogether to choose from. And so I picked out what I think could work for this. I'm actually putting together some proper cards and a set of abilities and a scenario for my Patreons. And so if you're a Patreon member, that's going to come for this month's perk. And if you're not a Patreon member, it'd be great to, if you could check it out and have a look at kind of what we do there. And it'd be awesome if you could join in too. But I'm going to go through something very quick here, just come up with some quick ideas, but go into a lot more detail for the Patreon. So you could choose an Akalian Morsar Guard for this at 200 points. There's some decent stats there and the movement would certainly fit in with it. But I think for this beast, this is a real powerful looking model. I think you'd be better off going for the Akalian Morsar Guard Lockean Prince. So make this the, with the leader room mark, make it your hero. And so this is going to be a hero in the warband. So this is listed in the book at 265 points with a movement 10, toughness 4, and taking 35 wounds. You've got the leader room mark, the flaming skull room mark, and the fly room mark. And then for the weapon, it's just the spear, which is a range of 2, making 3 attacks, strength 4, dealing 2 to 5 on a crit. So that makes sense if you get up close, you're going to do some damage with either the alapex itself or the blade. But I've added a second weapon, because we've got this big harpoon on the back, and I thought if we take the similar stats that we saw on our previous Namati Reavers, we've got a minimum range of 3, maximum 15. It's got two attacks there, strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 on a crit. But looking at the picture, this harpoon has got like four like spears in it, or four harpoons in it. So I imagine they could all be shot at once. So I wanted to change that from a two attacks up to four attacks. And I think that's much more fitting now. You could improve the strength, but I think for having the range, we could keep it the same. Points wise, I wanted to bring it up more for around 295 points because it's got an ability called Biovoltaic Blast and I thought it'd be cool to add another ability. But let's take a look at the quad Biovoltaic Blast first and then we'll also see the ability that I've written for it just to complement the look of the model and that harpoon weapon. So this quad is pretty nice. We allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of this ability to all visible enemy fighters within three inches of this fighter. Now I think this fits in with the model because this is quite a long alapex shark creature. So if he gets close enough within three inches, he can certainly lunge around and flap about and get hold of some of the enemy fighters and certainly deal some damage too. So I think this really fits in with it. I'd probably change the name to something a bit more fitting though. But then this is the one I've come up with for the harpoon. Just called it, there she blows. This is a triple. And for this, we pick a visible enemy fighter within 12 inches of this fighter. Then allocate a number of damage points equal to the value of the ability. Because once those four harpoons hit you, you're certainly going to be feeling it and taking some damage. But then I wanted to have the idea that they were perhaps even pinned down. So I just included that that fighter can then not move until the next round. So you'd certainly want to target perhaps an enemy fighter that hasn't activated yet if you were to use that ability. But there was another idea I had that you might be able to drag them along. So I just changed it to drag that fighter six inches directly towards this fighter. So I imagine you could shoot the harpoon, the alapex would turn quickly, swim off and it's going to drag that enemy fighter along. Now if they're on a, a building and they fall, they're going to take some falling damage. Maybe you can get them through some terrain that's going to cause injuries too. And so I thought that would play into it and would be quite fun as well. Now we're on to the Akalian Thrallmaster, the new miniature that's included in the box set. And nothing's really striking me here that would match the name, the Akalian King maybe, but it's the Isharan Soul Render that I think would really match up to this. I think it fits in with both ability and stats as well. So I think I would use the Isharan Soul Render for this. But again, for my Patreon, I'm going to come up with something completely unique for this model. So I think it's really, really is a cool model. But for the Isharan Soul Render, this is 170 points, so not too high for a leader. We've got the leader room mark and the flaming swords room mark as well. He's got a movement five, toughness three, and he can take 22 wounds. So the toughness certainly isn't high here. We've got two different weapons to choose from. The first is this long, uh, like almost like a trident, I guess, more like a spear, I suppose. But this is a range of two and he can make four attacks with it. Strength four, dealing two to five on a crit. So very similar to the icon bearers here. He's also got the weapon of the teeth coming from this eel creature. And so here it's got a range of three, making three attacks, strength four, and that's going to deal two to four on a crit. 
So I like these weapon options. Again, he can keep at range with that two and three range for the different weapons and with a movement five can certainly stay away from the close combat attacks that are going to come from the fire slayers. He's going to have a leader ability that we haven't seen yet so he does get that high tide triple leader ability, the double low tide regular fighter ability but his own one is a double called hangman's knot and this is a double leader ability. Pick a visible enemy fighter within three inches of this fighter and roll a dice. On a 3 plus until the end of the battle round, that fighter cannot make move actions or disengage actions. So I would play this narratively as if this creature's attacked, it's got hold of them and it's just tying up the enemy, wrapping itself around them with a frenzied attack and they just can't get away from it. So I think this is not a bad double actually, I think this could be quite useful and you know that enemy fight has only got to be within three inches of the fighter so you can still keep that little bit of distance there which I liked. And of course if you attack first and use that ability before you move, you may even have a movement left in the activation to get even further away from them. So there we go, that's the Ideneth Deepkin and all the different fighters we can use from the book. We're looking at, what, six there all together? So we've got six different fighter cards out of the 12. We're covering half of them there, so not bad at all. But I think we could do even more than this if we just add one other set to it. And that set is the Elethane Soul Raid for Warhammer Underworlds. I love this set. I think you get five really unique miniatures. I've done some Warcry cards for these for Patreon as well, because that crab and everything is fantastic. But I think these just open up a few other options for different fighters that you could include. More so the leaders rather than any of the others. But really, for the Ideneth Deepkin, I think you've got to get some more Sargard and the Ishlane Guard, those eels are fantastic and they really are a big part of the Ideneth and I think they're really fun in Warcry. Okay, now we're on to the Fire Slayers and we've got this great new model, the Auric Flamekeeper and this is a great looking model to kick off the Warband with and so all together we're going to get this guy plus three sets that already exist. So we're going to get Hearthguard Berserkers, Auric Hearthguard and Volkite Berserkers. So a good selection here again. And so let's have a look at each one individually and see what we can do with them. Now this is one war, but I haven't paid much attention to, but you've getting 15 fighter cards all together. So you're getting a nice selection there. And then just like with all the others, you're getting a good range of fighter abilities and leader abilities. But for the fighter abilities, there's three that any members of the war band can use. So let's start with the first one called Fire Steel Throwing Axe. And this one's a double, and these abilities really set the scene for how the warband is going to play. So here we pick a visible enemy fighter within six inches of this fighter and roll two dice. For each four to five, we allocate one damage point to that fighter. And for each six, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So that's going to help them make up for their poor range which you can see later on their movement is very low and so they're certainly going to be able to use this to chip away at the enemy who are perhaps trying to keep their distance from them and ping those arrows in but that said you know there's only six inches they can throw these so what we saw earlier with the namati reavers they can certainly keep back so they can keep all the thralls sorry they can keep back and no it is the namati reavers the reavers have got the range weapon and with that 15 inch range this six inches isn't going to get even close to that. So I think they still got it up against them with a movement three and a 16 inch range for this double ranged ability. Yeah, not looking good for them, I don't think. Let's not write them off yet. We've got lots more to look at. And here we've got another double called Relentless Zeal. And here we can add three to the move characteristic of the next move action made by this fighter, this activation. So this is great for a double. They can make up for that lack of movement and now they can keep up with the Ideneth. So this is going to be really useful and I can imagine using this a lot with these guys really trying to close that distance. So yeah, this one is a must for them to get them in the fight. They've also got a quad called Unleash Runic Fury and until the end of this fighter's activation we add the value of this ability to the attacks characteristic of attack actions made by this fighter that have a range characteristic of three or less. So this could be pretty good. It's only for one fighter though. It's going to be used on the one. So there's no like uh, bubble around a particular fighter or anything like that. It's only going to apply to that one. So for a quad, it's really got to be worth using this. So I think we'll have a good look at these next fighters and just see what would happen if we could perhaps even add six to their attacks characteristic. 
So the first fighters are the Volkite Berserkers. You're going to get a set of 10 of these included in the box set. And so these are Volkite Berserkers with pair of fire steel hand axes. And for 85 points, we've got that movement 3, toughness 4, and they can take 12 wounds. So nice and tough, and they can take some damage too. So that's pretty good. They've got a range of 1 with the axes. They can make four attacks, strength three, and they're going to deal one to three on a crit. So really interesting to see how here they're a little bit slower, but they're a bit tougher. So I like this. This is pretty good. And they can take more damage too. So that's our first one at 85 points. And you can see they've got no specific abilities, but they can still use the three we've just looked at. You've also got an option to build these as Volkite Berserkers with Firesteel Warpick and Bladed Sling Shield. And that's going to be a little bit more at 90 points. You still get a movement 3. Toughness is now 5. And they can take 12 damage. So that's pretty good. We've got the Bulwark Rumark. So they're going to get ability for that 5 points as well. And the range is 1. They can only make 2 attacks though. So half the amount as the previous ones we saw. The strength is 3. And they're going to deal 1 to 4 on a crit. So... 5 toughness is great for 90 points to get that I think is brilliant and 12 wounds is good as well but the damage output I don't think is going to be all that much but again if you can combine it with that ability we saw that unleash runic fury and add the value of the ability to the attacks characteristic then these could be some tough customers to go up against. And they've got that ability which is a triple called sling shield charge and until the end of this fighter's activation the next time this fighter finishes a move action within one inch of an enemy fighter, pick a visible enemy fighter within one inch of this fighter and roll a dice. On a 2 plus, allocate a number of damage points to that fighter equal to the value of this ability. So there is a chance you could roll that one and you're not going to get any damage applied at all. And for a triple, that could be quite costly to waste it on that. But if it's a high triple, a 5 or 6, you could get lucky and deal a good amount of damage there. And so I like that idea narratively. They run in, charge in with their shields and then do like a shield bash and do some damage. So a not bad ability there. And for 90 points, it looks like you are getting quite a bit with this fire. And from this one set, there's a third option. This is the Volkite Berserker with fire steel hand axe and bladed sling shield at 85 points. Movement 3, toughness 5 again. 12 wounds, we've got the Bulwark Rune Mark, and here it's range 1, 2 attacks, strength 3, dealing 1 to 3 on a crit. So again, the damage output isn't great, but they are tough. They get those 12 wounds, and they get that Sling Shield Charge ability that we've just seen. And then you can build a 4 fighter as well, which is the Volkite Berserker Car. So this is going to be a leader option, or you could include them as a hero. And for 170 points, we get... The movement 3, toughness is back down to 4, but it can take 22 wounds. It's got the leader room mark, so there's going to be ability we haven't seen yet. And the attack here for this guy is a range of 1, 4 attacks, strength 4, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. So this isn't bad, it can make a good number of attacks, but it's the ability I think you'd want to be spending this many points on a model with those stats with. So let's check out that ability. So this is a triple called Honor Our Oaths. And every leader with the leader rune mark and the Fire Slayer's rune uh, mark is going to be able to use this. So a fighter can use this ability only if an enemy fighter has been taken down by an attack action made by them this activation. Until the end of the battle round, add one to the attacks characteristic of attack actions that have a range characteristic of three or less made by visible friendly fighters while they are within six inches of this fighter. So this is good. He has to take someone out or down. He has to take them down. And then as long as he does that, he creates that six inch bubble all around him. And that's going to add one to the attacks characteristic of those other fighters. So that's pretty good. That's not bad. But there is that first um, thing you have to do, that first condition, you have to take down an enemy first in your first action to be able to use this. Now we're on to our next set of miniatures, which is a pack of five, and these are the Auric Hearthguard. And these are 125 points, movement three, toughness four, they can take 12 wounds. They got the Flame and Sword Rune Mark, so we'll see an ability we haven't seen yet. And they got two weapon options. One is a range weapon, minimum three, maximum 15. They can make two attacks, strength four, and they can deal two to four on a crit. So for a range weapon, that's pretty good. And then they've got another one, if they get up close, they can hit them with that axe part of the weapon, range one, three attacks, strength three, 
dealing one to two on a crit. So that's not so good. So you want to be using that range. And that range is going to come in really handy against the Ideneth for sure. And with that limited movement. So their double ability is called a case in Molten Rock. And until the end of this fighter's activation, the next time this fighter makes an attack action, subtract half the value of the ability, rounding up, from the move characteristic of the target fighter to a minimum of one until the end of the battle round. So there we go. So you hit them with this flame. It turns to Molten Rock and almost fixes their feet to the ground and prevents them moving as much as they'd like to. So a nice little double. You can really prevent them moving around. So that could be good against some of those units that could perhaps fly. So yeah, that would be a good one to really cut down that 10 movement of the Ideneth would be a huge deal. You can also make an Auric Hearthguard Carl from this set. And he's going to be a bit more in the points department. It's 180 points. Movement 3, Toughness 4, and 22 Wounds. He'll get the Leader Rue Mark and the Flaming Swords Rue Mark. He's got a range of 3 to 15, 2 Attack Strength 4, dealing 2 to 4 on a crit. And then if you get up close, range of 1, 3 Attacks, Strength 4, dealing 1 to 2 on a crit too. So not a huge amount of difference here. A little bit stronger if you get up close. And otherwise, it's very similar. So not a huge difference here. can take a 10 more Wounds. Um, but it's the leadership ability I suppose you're paying those extra points for. And he's going to get that triple on our oaths. And he's going to get the double in case in Molten Rock. And he's going to get the other three abilities that every member of the Fire Slayer Warband has available to them as well. Now we're on to another set of miniatures which are the Hearthguard Berserkers. And the first one you can build from that is the Berserker with Broadaxe. And so this is 115 points. Movement 3, toughness 4, 12 wounds. We've got a rune mark we haven't seen yet for an ability. The attack is range 2, 3 attacks, strength 4, and we're going to deal 2 to 4 on a crit here. So this is nice, not too bad at all. Would like to see some more attacks, so you certainly want to be using Unleash Runic Fury here and to deal some damage with strength 4, putting out 2 to 4 on a crit. That's really nice, and they're a little bit tougher as well. They've got this ability called Duty Unto Death, and this is a triple. And a fighter can use this ability only if they have five or more damage points allocated to them. So the more they get hit, this is really going to unleash the fury a little bit. And this fighter makes a bonus move action, then they can make a bonus attack action. So we like this triple. This is really good, and we see this a lot. Certainly with the Corvus Cabal, there's one similar for the Shrike Talon. But the condition is they have to have five or more damage points allocated to them so once they do that they're going to start getting really angry and going on a bit of a rampage i think so i really like that triple that's fun and i think can really play into the narrative here now we're on to another fighter that you can make from this set which is the hearthguard berserker with flame strike poleaxe and for 110 points you're getting that movement three toughness four 12 wounds we've seen the ability already for that rune mark but the weapon here is going to be a range two Three attacks, strength three, and now you're going to deal two to five, five on a crit. So you're going to do more damage here with this weapon. So for less points, you're going to do more damage potentially. And we've already seen the triple duty under death that they can use. But here's another model we can build from this set, which is the Hearthguard Berserker Carl with Berserker Broadaxe. And for 185 points, we get that same movement and toughness, but now it's 22 wounds. We've got the leader rune mark, so we know that ability we're going to be able to use, and the ability we've already seen for the regular fighters. This is a range of two, four attacks, strength four, dealing two to four on a crit. So a really nice amount of damage output here, and 185 points, that's not too bad. And then when you consider these abilities that they can use, I think this is all right. But I wouldn't be wanting this as my main leader, though, that's for sure. We can build yet another model with it too, called the Hearthguard Berserker Carl with Flame Strike Polax. This is great value. Four fighters from a box of five miniatures. That's really good. 185 points. We've got the same movement, toughness, and damage as the previous Carl. Same rune marks, but now it's a range of two, four attack strength three, dealing three to five on a crit. So a huge amount of damage here potentially. And with those same abilities, I think this has got some good potential to do some damage and use that quad unleash runic fury with this one and he could be a serious threat now we're on to the main man the auric flame keeper and we've got six different options i think we can choose for this one six leader options and the first one that stood out to me 
was this one here, the Auric Rune Master. For 170 points, you're getting a th movement 3, toughness 4, and you're taking a decent amount of wounds at 25. If you've got the leader rune mark, and one other, for one we haven't seen yet, for that flame in skull. He's got a weapon range of 2, he can make 3 attack strength 4, he's going to deal 1 to 4 on a crit, so not a huge amount of damage, but it's this Volcano's Call that I really like, because I think it suits the look of the model. And this is a double, where we pick a visible enemy fighter on the battlefield floor within 12 inches of this fighter, and roll a number of dice equal to the value of this ability. For each 4 to 5, allocate 1 damage point to that fighter, and for each 6, you allocate 3 damage points to that fighter. So for a double, I like this, I think you could keep him out of harm's way with that 12 inch range, and you know, it's certainly going up against the Eidneth, who's going to be flicking around, moving a lot, I think this could be quite useful. And I like it, I think it really fits with the look, and he's also going to have that triple honour our oaths as well. So I think this could be one option, but we do have a second option that I think would fit in with this model too, and that's the Auric Rune Smiter. And less points now at 165, but you've still got the movement 3, toughness 4, and that nice 25 runes. We've got the leader rune mark and the mystic rune mark, so we'll have a new ability as well. And then the weapon is going to be range 1, 3 attacks, strength 4, dealing 1 to 4 on a crit. So I like that he's got this double-handed axe, but the range is still only going to be 1, because his arms are so short, he's not going to get an awful lot of distance in. And he's not making too many attacks either, which I can imagine, because he's got his hands full there. But I think for this one, you really want to be using that mystic ability. And because the points are quite low, I think you could take quite a few of the tougher characters in there with you to help you out. But let's have a look at that ability. And it's a double called Runic Empowerment. And for this, we pick a visible, friendly fighter within three inches of this fighter. And until the end of the battle round, add the value of this ability to the strength characteristic of the next attack action made by that fighter that has a range characteristic of three or less. So you can almost partner him up with one of the more like hard hitting fighters and they could like go around the battlefield together. He could uh, kind of use them as a bit of cover to avoid the fight, but you know, keep him within that three inch bubble, do some damage. And then along with the honor our oaths, he's also got some abilities if he wants to get stuck in with a fight as well. So there we go, that brings us to the end of the models, and I think that's all the different fighter cards we can use for both the Eidoneth Deepkin and the Fire Slayers. So from all these models that are included in the box set, you can make potentially 12 out of the total 17 fighter cards that are included in that supplement book. So I think this is pretty good actually, and I think the Fire Slayers would come on top where that's concerned. But if you add in this set of fire slayers the chosen axes you've got a few more models with some different poses and you've got some different options for the leaders as well and i think this could be a good way to go 15 pounds for four of these models that's really good and i think that's going to give you access to almost all the fighter cards if you combined it with that too when I did the Age of Sigmar battle box reveal and went through the contents, I worked out the price and it came to about £212.50 RRP for the models, but then we're always going to get 20% or up to 20% off that price, which brings it down to 170 You're not going to be able to use those War Scrolls token or the book, but you are going to make £80 saving still on the cost of the miniatures, and if it's priced around the same amount we saw Shadow and Pain, you could be paying £90 for all the models you've seen here in this video, except for those two extra Underworld sets. If you play Age of Sigmar as well, then I think this is a really good set. If you're interested in both of these, then that'd be cool. And even if you're only interested in one and have the opportunity to split it, I think that's the way to go with this. If you could get all those miniatures for potentially half the, the cost of this by splitting it, you're only going to pay £45 each and get a really good starter army for Age of Sigmar to get going and some brilliant fighters for Warcry. You're going to get a lot of miniatures too, so if you want to play a campaign there's going to be more than enough points. You're going to get thousands of points here, more than you'll need, and I think you've got lots of options as far as fighter cards go. Certainly with the Fire Slayers you've got a lot more options. You know, covering 12 out of 17 is pretty good, and with a few additions to the Eidoneth you'd soon be getting most of those 12 fighter cards that you can see for them. I think adding some of those eel riders in there would be perfect. 
But I'd love to know what you think. Will you be interested in this Fury, the deep box? And do you think it's good for Warcry? Maybe you're going to split it. Is that a good idea? Perhaps you could even split it four ways. You know, there's enough points there to split this potentially between four people. But you would be fighting over those hero characters. But let me know what you think in the comment section below. It'd be great to hear your feedback. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below. But for now, thanks so much for watching. Please like if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games.